Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, today's project, <clears throat> we're working on doing some DIY home porting of an intake manifold. Uh, so this particular intake manifold is the Dorman LS2 intake manifold. And I specifically call out that it's the Dorman version, uh, the GM version of the LS2 intake manifold, not so great. The Dorman version uh, has some improvements, uh, namely... Right, this is a two-piece intake manifold. There's an upper shell and a lower shell. The lower shell that Dorman uses is the same molding that the Fast 92 intake manifold uses. <clears throat> and the Fast manifolds are known to make good horsepower, uh, but they're significantly more expensive. So you get the benefits of the lower shell uh, that the Fast manifold uses, and then the, you get the Dorman uh, upper LS6 manifold for the upper shell, and it gives you the 90 millimeter uh, throttle body opening compared to the LS6 that had a uh, either a 75 or a 78 millimeter throttle body opening. So uh, there are some benefits to this. <clears throat> how, however, uh, based on how it's constructed, I'll see if I can zoom in here. Like I said, this is a, a two-piece intake manifold. All right, <clears throat> and so when they mold this together, uh, they essentially uh, sonic weld or plastic weld, whatever you want to call it, uh, some shells together. And you end up with a pretty significant step right here in the, uh, the port, the, the runner here. So that, that closes down uh, airflow. And then you can kind of see where these two have two pieces come together. Uh, as they weld things together, they're not always completely flush. Now, in a stock application, that's probably not uh, that big of a deal. But obviously, I'm doing this because I've got an upgraded cam. Uh, I've got CNC ported heads. Uh, so I'm trying to get some performance out of this thing. Uh, so <clears throat> I think there's some benefits here to doing some light porting uh, on the manifold. I'm going to try not to get too greedy uh, as I'm porting. Because I could see where you could significantly alter uh, the airflow. Um, and for a DIY guy that doesn't have a, a flow bench to test things before and after, uh, if you got too greedy, you could probably really mess some things up. So I'm going to limit uh, myself to opening up um, kind of maybe what you call port matching. I will talk about that more in a second. Uh, so we're going to open up these runners a bit and then I'm going to try to take out. Uh, some of the restrictions like this step in here and clean up the transitions um, and I'll also if I can transition this around bear with me uh, where the throttle body goes I think there's some benefits to cleaning up uh, in this area as well okay so we'll talk for a second about what products I'm using uh, to do the porting because obviously this is a uh, what's essentially a plastic intake manifold. Uh, this is the old LS6 over here. Um, I've tried a couple of different things. I went a little crazy on Amazon with some uh, sanding drums and abrasive uh, buffing wheels just so I had uh, a variety of options, different grits, different sizes, because I wasn't quite sure what was going to work the best. Um, so I've had a little practice. I, I worked on a couple of the ports, uh, and I kind of got an idea now, I think, what's going to work the best. So um, I bought this set. <clears throat> These are some uh, tungsten carbide uh, grinding bits. Uh, I'm using my Dremel, by the way. Uh, obviously, if you had a die grinder, uh, you might have some additional options. Um, so this bit is what I primarily have been using. <clears throat> the 80 grit sanding drum also removes uh, bulk material pretty well. So you have to be careful with the, either one of these. You're really using these to kind of get the port to shape like you want it. Um, like I said, removing that step that's in there. Once you've got that out of the way, uh, then you can come back with some of the higher grit, either sanding drums or the abrasive uh, buffing wheels. And then we're trying to smooth up so you don't have the grinding marks uh, in the port runners. Also about these, this is kind of neat. This kit gave you some uh, different size mandrels. For your sanding drums uh, as you get into the corners of some of the ports uh, you need some of the smaller uh, sanding drums to get in there and smooth things out 
Uh, so this little kit came with uh, three different grits and then three different sizes of sanding drums as well. So that's kind of nice. Um, I just like having the options. And then what I've really liked are these abrasive uh, buffing wheels. So the brown one is 120 grit. The green one is 180 grit. Uh, the red one is 320. And the black one here uh, is 400. Uh, and sometimes like they came in these little packs and they've been in packing and shipping and so I don't know if you can see it they're a little misshapen as they come out of the pack uh, don't worry about that when you spend these things uh, you know at 10 to 15,000 rpms uh, they retain their shape back to normal uh, centrifugal or centripetal force whatever that is uh, gets it back to, to shape so uh, don't sweat that too much I'll also show you the setup I'm working with so I've got my Dremel uh, suspended and then I've got the flex shaft on the Dremel, uh, which makes it easier for getting down in, into these ports. Um, this flex shaft is also smaller than the, uh, you know, diameter-wise <coughs> uh, for getting down into those ports. Um, the larger body of the uh, Dremel makes it tough to get in there, but this flex shaft makes it much, much easier. Um, so this is a, a worthwhile purchase. It's uh, 20, 25 bucks. Uh, but if you want to do this, in my opinion, it's kind of mandatory. It makes life so much easier. Okay, so we'll talk for a second about one of the ports that I haven't worked on yet. So the width of this port from here to here uh, is right at one inch, uh, maybe just a hair over, depending on, on where you measure it at. Um, I went over to my cylinder head, so I've got uh, CNC ported uh, 243 heads. <clears throat> the port width on the heads is 1.15. Uh, so this is a fair bit smaller than the port that would be matching up to it on the cylinder head. So we have some opportunity uh, to open this up. Essentially 1.1 is the width from here to here. So you can see there's a bit of a shoulder on this. So that would be kind of the target if we could extend that opening all the way up uh, and around some, that would match pretty well to the cylinder head. <clears throat> um, I tried not to get too greedy with that, um, but that was my, my target of what I was trying to clean up. Um, if you can see, I don't know how well you can see it here. There's also a bit of a shoulder uh, right here. So this is where your, your injector goes. Um, so they have a bit of a, a lip in here. There's probably some casting flash from uh, from the plastic mold. So I was trying to going to try to open that up just a bit as well. This port also tapers. Uh, so if you measure down uh, deeper in here, it's probably a little bit wider than one inch. But as it comes up here to the top, uh, where it would meet with the cylinder head, uh, it tapers smaller. So evening that out and then widening it all the way around. Um, I think will provide some benefits and then we can get rid of uh, some of the shoulders and some of the messy transitions um, you know where they sonic welded this thing together so just to give you a quick visual so this socket um, outer diameter is 1.1 1 .1, uh, and you can see obviously it doesn't fit into the uh, into the port so if we slide over I can get the camera steady <clears throat> now you can see so this same socket significantly larger port opening so this socket fits in there pretty nicely like I said this is 1.1 1 .1. um, the opening in the head is 1.15 1 uh, so we're, we're real close to having it uh, maybe what you call port matched and then you can also see if I can get the light in here for you See, there's no longer uh, the step down in here. Uh, so we've got the that port runner opened up quite a bit. Um, and then, like I said, we worked on some of the transitions here. And then, uh, so we get the port to size, and then we come back uh, and try to smooth it out uh, so we don't have it too rough of a surface. You're never going to get it perfectly smooth. Um, 
but do the best that you can with the uh, higher grit abrasives. The other thing I'll show you, slide this back over, <clears throat> and you may have noticed it when we were looking at the other cylinder. So you can see in here, I had to do some patchwork. Um, as I began grinding down, so there's a, uh, a seam that runs in here, so where this, this piece was sonic welded uh, to the shell, <clears throat> there's a seam in here. And what I found is as I started grinding down on this one particular port, it looked like there was an air pocket or something in there. Um, so as this wall got thinner, I discovered that if I pressed on it a little bit, that that wall was flexing. There was an air pocket under it. So I had to cut that out, and then I came back with some JB Weld and smoothed out the area <clears throat> to fill that back in. And then I've, uh, I ground that back down and tried to smooth it back over. So it's not perfect, um, but you can run your, your finger over it, and it's actually very smooth. So while there's a, uh, a color difference there that you can obviously see there was some epoxy there, uh, it's actually pretty smooth. And that's one tip I'll give you. <clears throat> so obviously having uh, one of these little pencil lights uh, is awesome. It really helps you be able to see down into the to the cylinder and you can see shadows and that gives you an idea of where you've got ridges and things you might need to work on some more. Uh, but running your finger down inside the port, uh, you can feel high spots or rough spots. Um, things that your eye doesn't pick up on, but you can feel it with your, your finger. Um, so take a, a moment every so often as you're porting, just run your hand in there and see how things are, are coming along. It should be a smooth transition. Okay, so I just want to give you a visual on what I finally ended up with as far as the port size uh, opening. So on the right, uh, this is my old uh, LS6 intake manifold, the GM uh, LS6. And then this one is the new uh, Dorman LS2 uh, that I ported. <clears throat> and you can see the port size difference. Um, we use something like this socket uh, for a reference right it fits in pretty smoothly through the new ported size uh, but then obviously uh, doesn't come close to fitting in the port uh, for the LS6 uh, this is a little under an inch depending on how you measure it um, obviously after porting this one is much larger <clears throat> now the LS6 is a smoother flowing um, just because of the way it's cast. I don't know how well you can see down in there. Um, that lost mold uh, casting method uh, gives smoother transitions uh, through the intake, <clears throat> which is pretty nice. Uh, different than the multiple shells that get bonded together uh, with the Dorman unit or even the GM LS2. Uh, the other thing I'll show you, <clears throat> I mentioned I was going to do a little porting on the uh, throttle body opening. So I didn't go crazy with this. My goal was uh, primarily just to smooth it out. Uh, there's also a little bit of taper as you go from front to back. Um, it's a little larger opening diameter up here versus back here. There's a slight taper to it. Um, so I, I kind of smoothed that out a little bit more. Um, I did most of my porting, if you will, on the back side of this um, as opposed to trying to opening, open this up anymore. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out nice and smooth. Um, I did most of the uh, initial porting with a 120 grit uh, sanding drum. <clears throat> and then I came back with uh, multiple stages of the abrasive uh, buffing wheels just to, to smooth it out, make sure there weren't any uh, grooves or anything like that. And so I ended up with it's over 90 millimeters all the way through, <clears throat> which is... Uh, you know the goal uh, so that there's no restriction because I'll run the 90 millimeter LS2 throttle body with this uh, so you wouldn't want a smaller opening behind it that'd be a restriction so uh, even at the smallest back here it's like uh, 90.5 millimeters and up front it's uh, closer to 91 and a half uh, millimeters so shouldn't be a restriction here uh, it's nice and smoothed out so I'm pretty happy with that 